Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the new all-in-one flight controller from HGLRC, the HGLRC F4 Zeus. I've used their other all-in-one flight controller, the HGLRC F428, which is a stack of two boards. On the bottom we have a 4-in-1 28A ESC controller and on the top an Omnibus F4 flight controller and the Zeus actually combined these two together besides the fact that it supports between 2 to 3S batteries unlike the AGLRC F428 which supports between 2 to 4S LiPo batteries and the 4-in-1 ESC is a 15 ampere 4-in-1 ESC controller so it's not 28 amperes like the F428. Inside this box we're getting the flight controller this wire, which I'm going to go through all its pinouts later in the video. A 470 microfarad capacitor, which has flexible legs, which is pretty nice because then you can fit it better on the board after soldering it. We also get in some M2 spacers and nuts. And finally, this short diagram that shows you all the pinouts. And on the back, we can see some specifications and a QR code that will lead you to the instructions manual. Now they do tell you on the back that First, you should check if it's working before soldering it because otherwise they're not going to support it. Anyway, the flight controller comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 3.15. As you can see, it uses an Omnibus F4 firmware, so you might want to update it anyway before you're going to use it on your build. Now, although that the distance between the mountain holes is the same as the F428 and is the standard 20 by 20 millimeters, as you can see, this board is a little bit bigger and its measurements are 36.3 by 32.3 millimeters, whereas the dimensions of the F428 ESC board are 34.1 by 31.2 millimeters. So you can see that it's a little bit bigger, so you have to check it will fit in your build. The weight of the Zeus is 6.55 grams, whereas the F428 weighs 8.25 grams so it's a little bit lighter. Now let's go through the pinouts of the board. On the bottom we have the VTX connectors. You can see that the plus and the minus are separated which is great because on some boards they are next to each other what can lead to a shout out. So you can see that the video out is placed in the middle then the ground then the plus and these pins are going to get the direct voltage from the LiPo battery. Over here we have the battery leads, the ground and the plus pads. Moto 1 is going to be connected to these ESC pads, Moto 2 to these pads. Over here we have the boot button, I think they should have included a button because these things sometimes can fall apart so be careful when you press it. Moving on to the top, over here we have the ground, 5 volt and SBUS and PPM pads. You have also a DSM or DSMX option so you can solder your DSMX receiver to the pads over here. You have the plus 3.3 volts ground and signal pad for DSM. Over here we have the plus 5 volt video in and ground pad for the camera. Again, it's separated. You can see that the plus 5 volts is not next to the ground. And a new feature that this board has opposed to the F428, which is lacking extra UR ports. You have over here TX3, RX3 and TX6 and RX6. So you have two UART ports. In the new edition of the F428, I think that they are going to include a UART port, which is great, especially if you want to use extra peripherals like uh, Runcom Split, for example, and then you will be able to control it through the UART. Currently, in this version, it is not possible. On the bottom of the flight controller, you can find this connector. The left pin is the RSSI, then S6, which I'm not really sure what it is used for. Then the ground, 5 volt buzzer, ground, 5 volt and LED. So unlike the HLRC F428, which has dedicated pads for the buzzers and the LEDs, this one is using the pinout over here. The only pins that I'm probably going to use are the buzzer and maybe I'm also going to use the RSSI depending on, on the receiver that I'm going to use when I'll use this flight controller in a build video. So basically using this flight controller will enable you to build a very low profile quadcopter because you can see that instead of using two boards you can use just one. The big downside of posed to the F428 that its 4-in-1 AC controller is only 15 amperes with 25 
ampere burst for 10 seconds, whereas the F428 has 28 amperes, so it can use much stronger motors. So if you're building, like, let's say, a 110 millimeters quadcopter with 1106 motors, I think this would be a perfect match, and I plan to use it pretty soon, along with these motors from Spintech, and also I'm going to use it with this nice frame from Spintech as well. So I hope I will be able to post a build video in the next two weeks or so. I have lots of builds going on right now, so I really hope I will be able to build it because I look forward to test these motors and also to test this flight control and see how it performs. As for the price, this is a little bit more expensive right now from the F428. You can get just these boards for around 60 bucks, whereas this one costs $73, which is almost the same price as getting the F428 along with the TX20 video transmitter. So again, you have to take everything into consideration and see which motors are going to use. And if you want to build a low profile 90 to 110 millimeters, I think it might be a great match. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this flight controller, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.